you are. I was at uh, I was working on Oklahoma. I was backstage. I was tech for Oklahoma. And um, one of my things was during the Judd scene. I was supposed to go and get the noose afterwards. And we got the scene changed. Every night we got the scene changed, and the last thing was the noose came down. Time for the light people weren't paying attention, and they lit the lights as I was on stage. And it's this deer in the headlights kind of look, <laughs> me grabbing the noose. I slid, ran and slid behind stage. Nobody noticed. I, I don't know how they missed it, but not a single one of the audience members seemed to recall me doing this, so I must have been okay. <laughs> but I was freaking out because they were lighting the stage while I was still out there. I'm trying to think of a good one. Um... Again, we were doing Big River. Uh, one of the things of Big River is that uh, the main characters, Huckleberry Finn and Jim, are going down the Mississippi on a raft. So they had to make a raft that was mobile and you could steer. On stage, that's a very interesting thing just right there. But what they came up with is that they made a box at the back of the raft and a tech crew would be in the box pushing the raft around the stage. Opening night, we found out, 10 minutes before we were supposed to start, the guy who was in that box was homesick. Nobody had let anybody know. Yeah. <laughs> um, everybody started panicking. It's like, does anybody know the, the uh, wow, blocking, thank you, the blocking for the, uh, for the raft. And somebody brilliantly said, well, Dan helped out one of the rehearsals. One. One. And it was for one half of the scene. We're like, okay, are you ever on stage when the raft is? I don't think so. At which point I got physically grabbed, thrown in the raft, and said, go. This was interesting. They said, okay, they let the actors know who were on the, on the raft to try to steer with their sticks. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out well until the scene with the dead body that went, got pulled across the stage. I ran over said body. <laughs> when a raft hits a speed bump, it's an interesting look. <laughs> Yeah, he was dead. <laughs> luckily, luckily the uh, the full body that was going across actually survived said incident, but <laughs> it made for a humorous part of the show that was not supposed to be funny. <laughs> We had to do use flash paper for uh, a scene. Part we had to light the flash paper behind this guy to make it look like we we're lighting him on fire as one of the pieces. All right, the building had beans tonight. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Did somebody have a phone? <laughs> oh, oh and here it goes again. <laughs> okay, are we done? Okay. It's coming. Uh, oh, okay. So we had to light this flash paper behind him, and he's got the, the apparatus that lights the paper. I love the idea of apparatus. Apparatus. He was the lighter. <laughs> well, you know. And so he's, he's lighting it, and at one point, the, one night, the paper flew off and onto the kid's backpack. And it looked like it was going to start the backpack on fire. We were freaking out, and I'm like, I'm watching, waiting. Doing one of these. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't actually light him on fire, but it was a close thing. And he didn't notice, and we told everyone, don't tell him, because he was already scared of this fire behind him. <laughs> <laughs> if he'd known, he would never <laughs> let us do it again. But we did have a similar incident on, at the, on the Totally Hot um, stage with the flash paper. Oh. Um, at one point, 
when, during our show at the Renaissance Festival that totally had, one of our people had scarves, because he juggled scarves um, during the show. <coughs> and um, the captain didn't think this was very fun because it's not fire involved. So we, he had a piece of flash paper attached as one of the scarves. And he lights it, saying, that's, you know, it's not... What was the exact line? Uh, it, it doesn't involve fire. It doesn't involve fire and lights it and it goes up. Well, at one point, it got too close to the rest of the scarves and set the scarves, the rest of the scarves on fire. <laughs> so Ishmael had this belt of scarves on fire and melting onto him because they were not, they were not cotton, they were acetate. Yeah. Suffice to say, they did not juggle as well as they used to. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they had an extra weight. It was very funny. <laughs> yes. Um, so, do you guys think of anything you wanted to add? Come on. Yeah. Like I said, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear everybody. It's always fun. Um, 
costuming for that was interesting too. Oh my god. Because they had these bodysuits for us as cats. <clears throat> and some of us got to help with decorating our costume, but they took mine and this other girl's. And they weren't paying attention to where they put the spots. I looked like I had a fur patch right here. <laughs> I ended up having to put a stripe across so it looked more like shorts. But at first it was like... Because she was, really? of course, also had a tan skin suit on. Yeah. So it looked tan and then this dark brown. Yeah, that was fun. At least I didn't do two spots right here. That would have been really bad. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> pay attention, people. Yeah. Just pay attention. <laughs> we had one costume guy for that who uh, had an issue. He had a white suit. It was a white suit. Okay. If, if, if you get on the stage, or have been on stage, or whatever, if the costumer comes up to you and says, Get a dance belt. Get it. Get it. As a male, get a dance, get a dance belt. belt. This guy decided he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to go out because he also didn't know what it was. It's basically a jock strap for actors, but it blends into the skin so you don't you're not obviously wearing stuff under and holds under. things in tight so that tight stuff over it doesn't show obvious yeah. fits. Especially in like a, a dancing you know, a dancing guitar. He was wearing tidy whities He was wearing tidy whities Under a white skin suit. And the person in the back of the theater could tell he was wearing tidy whities under a white skin tight suit. Horrible. <laughs> they were Fruit of the Looms. Not because he told me. That's, that's when mental floss needs to happen after those. <laughs> okay, so I'm, of the people that have been in theater, how many have been the object of another actor deciding they were going to do something funny in the last performance? We were doing Hello Dolly, and I was playing Stanley, and the guy playing Rudolph was there on stage. I am. Um, <laughs> um, but I was playing uh, Stanley, and he was playing Rudolph. And they're the um, proprietors of the restaurant that Dolly and Horace and all the characters go to. Um, and at one point during the play, he and I are chasing a fly during um, during one of the songs. And what it is is chaos would happen, and we were chasing the fly, and then everybody froze except for the person singing. On the last performance, we're chasing this fly, and I look, and Rudolph has got this weird smile on his face. And he's looking at me, and he pulls back and slaps me on the nose. And then we had to freeze. So I got... <laughs> he quickly turned up stage so no one, none of the audience could see him, and started laughing. <laughs> I'm still on profile. Lose it. <laughs> oh! Now see, I didn't have it happen to me. I was one of the ones who did it to other people. <laughs> I'd call you something, but this is under 18. <laughs> I, was, I was in Tartu, again, the one where I got injured and had to be on a cane. But in the last performance, we were so tired of this because we were young and it was a very high bro play and we were bored by it half the time. Uh, but at one point, I was supposed to slap my maid. And she was a little pain. The last performance, I did really slap her. She wasn't ready for it. It was kind of fun. I, I, I blamed it on nerves. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But the look on her face was priceless. <laughs> Getting yelled at the director for slapping somebody on stage. Priceless. Priceless. Awesome.
So I, one I want to tell isn't really a theater story, um, but I figured you, you guys as anime fans will probably get a kick out of this because it happened at this hotel. About five years ago when Anime Detour was still here, uh, Christopher Ayers was one of the, one of the guests. Um, do you guys know who he is? Okay, I figured most people do. So, um, and I was there and we went swimming with my, my new stepdaughter at the time. And I was in the pool having, we were playing and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll let her pretend to flip me in the pool. Which point I got flipped, I jumped backwards and went head first into the floor and gave myself a concussion. As I'm being led out of the hotel, a little iffy, one of the guest liaisons that I do comes up and goes, hey, I want to introduce you to Chris Ayers. <laughs> Chris Ayers will forever remember him as the guy with the concussion. Concussion boy, yes. Concussion boy. When I was a guest of honor with him later on, he's like, oh yeah, you're a concussion, concussion boy, weren't you? So, that, let's see, uh, more theater stories. Um, let's see. Um, oh. <laughs> this, one, this one's funny. Uh, so, and this is, this'll teach you a little bit about us that you might not want to know. But anyway, so this has happened to us twice now in theater, uh, where we are both in the same performance, and we go in, and in something, for some reason, they need whips. And we look and we say, we can get you whips. We got you covered. We got you covered. And they're like, oh yeah, ha 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 ha, whatever. The next performance, we come in with a suitcase, well, a, like a long box. Rehearsal, the next rehearsal. Rehearsal, sorry, rehearsal. Drop it down, open it up, and go, take your pick. About ten whips in this cage. Pick <laughs> one. And all the cast and the director is looking at the whips, looking up at us, looking at the whips. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Don't you have these? <laughs> what else do you need? We can find it. We tell you. <laughs> no. The funny thing is that one of them was the Fantastics where we did the fire thing. It was great because first the whips happened. And then they're like, okay. A little while later, in that same rehearsal, well, okay, we have to do this fire, try to get fire to happen. Oh, we can do that. And then juggling, that was me. <laughs> and it's just this slow turn of like, what have we added to this show? <laughs> Ask Dan and Jules, they can do anything. <laughs> and are willing to do pretty much anything. Yeah. You got another one? What was it? <laughs> we were in. We were in. Uh, Agatha Christie's *The Mousetrap* mm -hmm. for Garden yeah. Theater, and uh, we we brought. They were looking for furniture. We brought in one of our chairs that was falling apart. Um, literally, we'd set it down and dust would come out the bottom. Um, but we had. We were a week away, and the theater went under. Yeah. A week away from performing. That was probably the worst thing ever. I had finally gotten all my lines memorized. I was so pissed. <laughs> we didn't get to perform it, and I think that was one of my favorite parts, and I really wanted to perform it. That's horrible. What did you say you felt like? Let's see, we had a, I was, I was working with a company who was doing a five minute um, preview, basically, to try to sell a show to the Sci-Fi Channel. And it was based on the, uh, loosely based on um, cyberpunk shadow run kind of kind of thing, which is cybernetically enhanced humans in the future, uh, computer people, stuff like that. Um, but they had me doing a couple different parts because they didn't have many actors doing this because no one was getting paid. <laughs> um, but one of them, is, one of the things that we were doing was this cybernetically enhanced female fighter was being hit on by this very gross guy in line, and she eventually just backhands him to knock him out. The woman who was playing this, it, enha this enhanced woman was not normally an actress. The director had walked, found her on the street and said, hey, I'm doing a movie, do you want to help? 
And she said yes. It's like, wow, that seems like such a dangerous question to say yes to. You know, when somebody on, in the streets of Minneapolis, just down the street from Deja Vu, goes, hey, I'm doing a movie, do you want to be part of it? <laughs> but, uh, but she was a bodybuilder. So she had a lot of muscle. Which I found out when she came up to backhand me just a moment too soon, and my face wasn't far enough back. And she clocked me in the face. At which point I thought, okay, this hurt, but at the same time, I'm gonna get her, and I fell backwards. And she's like, oh my god! <laughs> and I get up, and she says, and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And, well, that's not what the blood says coming down your face. Oh. I'll go clean that up. <laughs> I got another one. Um, oh, a while back, I was in a trailer that was being filmed here in Minneapolis <laughs> called War for the Oaks. Do we have to have them sign waivers not to tell the conservator of the story? No. Okay. Uh, might be, but maybe not. I, I don't think they'll tell. So, it was being full, it was being filmed at the Como Conservatory and at part of it. And we had a bunch of different scenes, but the one scene that we had to keep doing over and over at the conservatory was they're running up and I have to try to fight them with a sword because I'm one of the protectors of the queen. So I'm fighting with a sword and I get, I fall back onto this cement bench, you know, the cement benches in the Como Conservatory. So we kept doing this over and over and over again because we weren't getting it right. The, we get to one point where they do it again, and afterwards they go, great, <laughs> that's perfect, good, because we broke the bench. I fell onto the cement bench and it snapped. <laughs> there was not going to be another take, so that would be the good one. <laughs> and I'm looking at the bench, and I'm looking at the director, and he goes, that's what we have insurance for. <laughs> like, thank God. <laughs> I died three times in that in that trailer, and if you look it up on YouTube, you can see me in three different areas at War for the Oaks. Okay, now I'll explain why I'm looking at her funny. Okay, we have been married how long? Mm -hmm. Five years. Five years. You've told me the story of this bench a couple times, right? Yeah. This is the first time I've heard I could look it up on YouTube. Yeah, you can look at it. All right. Oh. By the way, I'm gonna be a bride for Bat Blackula at Brian Lake Bowl on uh, Halloween. She's gotta make so, her advertisement. Gotta make her advertisement, so come see me. <laughs> see, we got, we got a little bit for a few more stories. Yeah. Um, is she eating your shoulder? Or? Oh! <laughs> it is chilly in here, what is up with that? <laughs> Yeah. It's indoors. <laughs> there is such a thing as heat. <laughs> <sighs> cheap? Did you, say, did you say cheap people? What? Oh, cheap people. Oh, they're not trying to be. I got you. Uh, they wanted more bodies for us? Oh. Uh, Alright then. So, in other words, everybody jump up and down and we'll get this place in the door. Alright. It's been a while. It'll level out. Oh, so yeah. Good more people on <laughs> So, uh, let's see. We, we had one uh, the funny story, I guess. Uh, I, I have more funny than humorous because luckily not that many people have died while I've been doing stage, so that's good. Um, <laughs> um, we were doing The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, I'm, you seemed excited about that one. Like, <laughs> okay, um, we were doing the line, the witch in the wardrobe. I was a penguin. Now figure that one out. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were doing line, the witch in the wardrobe, and we were doing the musical version. However, as luck would have it, we got nobody who could sing. So they were just like, I don't want to do the song numbers on this. Can we do anything else? And he came up with this brilliant idea. He had seen. Brilliant is kind of in quotes at this 
point, just so you know. Um, he had seen myself and a friend of mine do um, MC at another performance of a bunch of skits. And he, thought, he found out that we had written our own material. And he's like, I want them to come out and do little bits in the middle of this, in the play. Well, everybody freezes. We'll come out, they'll come out and they'll do something and they'll go, this is how I became a penguin. Two penguins were pissed off that they would, couldn't get into this show, even though it was all winter. So we should be in this. Well, you're not supposed to, it's a forest. I don't care. So we started saying, we're gonna boycott this show because penguins weren't allowed to be in it. That was kind of the theme of our things. We'd come out, we'd do weird things to penguins. We didn't tell the actors what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Some of them were. <laughs> but we'd come out, and it wasn't that we'd do anything to the actors, but now they're hearing these weird little thing, vignettes, while they're trying to freeze on stage. Like, one of, the, one of the lines from the play is, Peter, you fought like a seasoned warrior. And it's after one of the battles. Peter, you fought like a seasoned warrior. Yes. Blah. So, the penguins came out and did their version of the scene. And we came out and we're, yes, Petri, you fought like a seasoned warrior. That's because I used the Colonel's special herbs and spices. And the actors are back there going, <laughs> trying not to show that they're laughing. They got to get us back. At the end of the show, we came out when they were taking their bows with picket signs, saying, let penguins act and penguin power. At which point they physically threw us off the stage. <laughs> Thankfully, because of a stunt we did earlier, we had something set up on the other side of the stage to fall. <laughs> it was fun. Were the penguin suit soft? <laughs> they helped. <laughs> they helped a little. The the beaks kind of hurt when we landed on those. Though. Yeah, it was fun. As I, I did 23 years of acting at the Renaissance Festival, I probably shouldn't tell that. It, it reveals how old I am. I'm fine with that. I'm only driven 36. Bite me. <laughs> anyway, careful, he will. Um, so I've done about 23 years there, and I find it interesting that as a woman in a corset who is not a small woman in a corset. Other women feel the need to poke at my chest. I swear, every single day of my acting there, somebody would come up, are those real? <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to hit them back. <laughs> Drugs are always fun. Drugs are always, always fun. fun. Oh, God. I was at one point helping with their, uh, at the Renaissance Festival with the acting. I was helping at uh, closing gate, and a drunk decided to push me off of the uh, bench into the line of people on the other side. That was fun. I think I landed on a three-year-old. It's okay. I was fine. <laughs> he doesn't like children <laughs> or dogs. <laughs> what was that? He's a cat. Well, he's a cat person. He doesn't hate them. He just doesn't like them. Well, you took a what? Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, actually, the the puppet that I use is is a wolf, so it is a canine. So he he was actually he. He's, he's finding the canine part of himself. He's getting in touch with it. No, I'm getting in touch with the dog. <laughs> Or a dog. <laughs> um, that was actually with with Wolfie. Um, the reason he was created was because of a show that we were in. It was called Once Upon a CSI. It was another French show. Um, it a much better French show. A much better French show. Um, we were taking. They were taking CSI and putting it with a Snow White feel. Um, hmm? You can't. Well, you she, can't see she that. She dies, right? I mean. <laughs> You see, okay, recently we started watching Once Upon a Time, the TV show. 
be right. It, it, I didn't think I'd like it. I ended up loving it. But the thing is, um, I watched that, and then I remembered back to the show, and I'm like, oh, so that's where they got all their ideas. <laughs> um, but anyway, so it was a CSI spoof using storybook fairy tale characters. Wolfie was created to be the big bad wolf as a puppet. And the reason that he, this small puppet was the big bad wolf is because he was bad. He's the bad boy, the bad boy. He makes me squeak out sometimes. <laughs> and that's difficult to do. <laughs> I've seen everything. <laughs> so, Wolfie, I, I, this is a compliment to what I was able to do, but at the same time became a little annoying. Because I was so... I, I, I hate saying it this way because I, I don't... You were so good at I doing so, the puppet. I was so good at doing the puppet, people forgot that I was there. <laughs> they would get out of the way of the puppet, but not out of my way. At one point, the puppet has to kind of jump out up onto the table, and the person next to him wouldn't leave room for Daniel. Yeah. Ever. He, he moved enough for the puppet to get back by, and I'd have to like almost run him over and push him out of the way so I could get there. Otherwise, the puppet would have just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I had to keep pushing people out of my way. Because we forgot he was there. He wasn't listed as the puppeteer. It was Wolfie Be Bad was listed in, in, the, in the program. Uh, program. I, I liked it so much. Wolfie was becoming such a personality on his own. Yes, Wolfie was playing himself. Wolfie has his own Facebook page. Yes. Wolfie be bad. You can go friend him. And like I said earlier, if you're 18 plus, you'll have a panel tomorrow night. Um, yeah. And he, he hangs out in the dealer's room every once in a while. Yeah. So, and he's cleaner in there. Or he tries. <laughs> he tries. He tries. Um, Where are we for time? Where are we for time? We're getting close. Uh, we got five minutes. So, do you have any last questions? Oh, maybe you're better at this than I. Okay, let me. I have to think of another one. Okay, um, I can make one up. <laughs> no. No. Uh, let's see. One, I'm trying to think. I got one. I can think of one, but it had nothing to do with me or anything. And okay. I'm not the one that originally told the story. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Um, Okay, I'll give, pro I'll give who this goes to. This goes to Chris Ayers. I, I was on a panel like this with him, and he was telling me this story, and this one's a horror story. Um, he was part of, um, they were doing Robin Hood, and they were doing a sword fight. It, he wasn't involved in the sword fight, but the um, person who was playing Robin Hood and the person who was playing the um, Sheriff of Nottingham were in a sword fight. And they had it all choreographed. And they were doing the sword fight, and at one point they did, they blocked, blocked. There was an overhand swing that was supposed to happen where there's a block. As the um, sheriff of Nottingham comes in screaming to try to get um, Robin Hood. The sheriff forgot one of the side swings. And so when Robin came up with his sword, the sheriff was coming forward screaming. The sword caught him here, went through his cheek and out the other one. Yeah. The only thing that saved him from losing his bottom jaw was the fact he had his mouth wide open because he was screaming. He was yelling. So the sword went right between his teeth but took out both of his cheeks. And unfortunately, I mean, this was a horrible thing. He wasn't able to really come back and do much acting after that because, I mean, I guess he could have played the Joker in the Dark Knight. Stop it. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you know how I got these scars? There's makeup. There's makeup. You can fix that. Yeah. But, I mean, so it's a horrible thing that happened to him, but the thing is, it could have been so much worse. If he had his mouth closed, it would have taken his jaw right off. That would have been even worse. But yeah. again, that if any of you get into anything that you're doing sword fighting, remember the moves. <laughs> yeah, it's um, stage combat can be very terrifying, very difficult. Um, 
um, Chris Harris does a great job teaching it and great job choreographing it. And actually, with those, uh, we got like two minutes that I can do one more from the Fantastic that involves yes. sword fighting. But we were using swords, we were using wooden dowels because part of the whole thing about the Fantastics is it was all pretend. So there was just, they were doing it with dowels. And at one point during a performance, we went up with the dowels, he blocked the strike, and his sword split and went flying off of the audience. <laughs> We didn't hear anyone scream. Hopefully, it's not sticking out of somebody's eye. <laughs> so even when you get it right, sometimes things go horribly wrong. So horribly, horribly wrong. But it is that time. Thank you all for Thank coming. Thank you. Thank you for the ones that stayed. Yeah. <laughs> so, and thank you guys for sharing your stories. So it was it was fun.